All right, boys, we are back, and it's time to continue year number one with our Ottawa Senators. Now, what a year it's been. Year one, I did not expect us to have this kind of record at the trade deadline, 37-15-8, which is good for tied for second in the NHL. We're only, what, five points behind the Pittsburgh Penguins, tied with the Colorado Avalanche, right? So, I mean, we are, we're an official contender this year. I did not think that this year would be like this. I thought we would be struggling to make the playoffs, maybe a wild card playoff team, just like the Sens in real life. But Andrew Hammond came in, he played amazing. Bobby Ryan's got 25 goals. Carlson's got 41 assists. Uh, Hoffman and Stone, they're playing great, right? So our team is looking good. And because of that, I'm in a weird spot right now. I don't, I, the one thing I don't want to do is force a trade or force a move that comes back to bite me in the ass just because I feel like I have to do something. And that's kind of the spot where I'm at right now. I want to make a move to bolster our roster for the playoff run, but I don't want to hurt our roster for the future. And we really don't have any trading assets to move out, right? So I'll get into that in a second. We have some comments that kind of address some of those questions as well. So we'll get started with this first. Johnny, here's an idea for you. Why not show us the central scouting or the scouting central rankings at the halfway point and end of the season so we can speculate and give suggestions Suggestions on who to draft based on your standings or even give suggestions on where you should send the scout out so we can get some more info on that on certain prospects uh, blah 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 we've never really gotten a good look at prospect pools outside the top five or who you have drafted so it would be cool I'm not talking about suggestions like trade up to number one and get a franchise player though more along the lines of you if you get the 30th overall pick we can plan ahead and get you to send the scout out to where the projected late first early seconds are so it's not so much of a guessing game all right so uh long uh, long uh, comment right there so this guy wants to see more of a updated uh draft hang on a second where is that is it scouting and scouting central yeah yeah i can do this for you guys sure no problem you guys want to see the uh, all the uh, first liners all right so it's still saying projected yeah they still got <laughs> connor mcdavid going after jack eichel oh man that shouldn't be like that. Whatever though, you guys have saw he's he's been a he's been a franchise player before. And then we have four top four top ten goaltenders. Yeah, all right. So hang on a second here. Go down to the ranks of fifty, I guess. All right. So there you go, sixty. There you go. So there are all the goaltenders projected to go in the what's it called the uh, the first and second round. All right. Now let me just go back to all players. Come on now, game. Holy shit! No wonder I don't come to the screen. Jesus, come on. Get to where I want you to go. There you go. Holy cr Oh, my God. This takes forever. All right. So, Jack Eichel, McDavid, Hannafin. All right. All these guys you can see. So, I'll just go down to... Hang on a second. I'll just go down to the 60th so you can see everybody in the first and second round. There you go. All right. So, go nuts with it. I don't even know what we're looking for when it comes to uh, drafting just yet. And that's that's what I mean about being between a rock and a hard place. I don't necessarily want to trade for draft picks, but I'm kind of afraid to trade for veterans at the same time, right? So I don't know what to do here. Next comment. Johnny, I'm a Habs fan, but in all honesty, that the goal is to win the Stanley Cup. It's to win a Stanley. Yeah, it's to win a Stanley Cup. But realistically, a guy like uh, Chris Phillip has to retire with Ottawa. First overall, and he's still here. Go Habs, go. All right, so... Yeah, you know what, that was one thing I was talking about at the beginning of the season. If we weren't going to be a playoff team, older players such as, you know, Chris Neal and Leguan, even Chris Phillips, maybe you could unload for second and thirds. But now that we're a playoff team, yeah, he doesn't go anywhere. He stays on the team for sure. This is what I mean. I don't even know what to trade for right now. The team is playing so good, so I don't want to mess with it. But I also, as the general manager, I want to do something to help our playoff chances out, right? But we don't have trading assets. That's the problem. Next, you should try to move someone for a player like Yarmir Yager. Florida is not making the playoffs, and although he will most likely retire after this year, he will give you the poise you were looking for and will be a perfect second line right wing. It makes a lot of sense. Maybe trade MacArthur and either a later or... A later pick or a prospect. I'm not sure what overall you made Yager, so he could even play on the first line left wing. Any other suggestions? Well, he's got a point about Yarmir Yager. He's a good player. Uh, the Florida Panthers, I think, are not a playoff team, right? So it does make sense. I should know. I didn't hang. Go to trading options. Did not mean to go to edit lines. There you go. All right. But you guys are going to see the problem that I'm running into with these kind of moves. So the Florida Panthers, all right, Yarmir Yager. Yeah, so they want to give him up. His trade value is nice and low, right? But say we want to move him. Who do you move him for? 
I don't want to trade away Clark MacArthur for a uh, uh, Yarmir Yager. We got Clark at 85 overall, 29 years old for another five years. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's great for Florida. They get a young player for next year. Yager might retire, right? I would want to give them like a young prospect, but I want to hold on to my prospects. So like, just for example, centers, no, 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 no. Pajot, I'm going to hold on to, no. Leguan, I don't want to trade Leguan for Yager straight up. Because our team is working fine right now with the defensive bottom six, right? So that's messing with the roster just to mess with it. I don't want to do that. I want to bring in somebody who would definitely help out the bottom six. I don't know if Yarmir Yager is that player. He would help out the top six, but then you're talking about a makeover for the team that is second in the NHL, right? I don't want to do that. Now, Pumpel might be somebody that I want to trade away, but he's 73, 22 years old with four star. I want to I want to hold on to him, right? Pajot and Pumpel are the only guys I really have. Greening, I don't want to trade Greening. He's a bottom six player for me. No, no, no. I mean, Chris Neal maybe, but eh, I'd rather hold on to Chris Neal because he's another guy who's been playing this year, helping out his team. And if the playoffs happen, I want some toughness, right? So I don't want to trade away him. These guys have no trade value. Defenseman, no, 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 no. Then no trade value, right? Goaltenders, no, no, no. Well, that guy, but barely any trade value. Dreger, so no point in trading him. And then the draft picks, I want to hold on to all these draft picks. I don't even want to trade away a second. I know that may make sense, a second for Yarmir Yager, but we don't have any prospects in our pool. So I, I want to be competitive this year, but I, I'm also looking down the road, and I know if I give up our prospects or our draft picks, it'll come back to bite us by year five or year six, all right? Year one, year two, year three drafts are very deep in the first three rounds. I want draft picks, so I don't think Yarmir Yager is... I could definitely do it, but as the general manager, I just don't agree with that mindset of giving up future pieces for right now. Not yet with Ottawa. Not yet. All right. Still a few years away from there. Uh, next comment. Pick me up from Florida. You need an all-star on the team's first line. I'll get you 50 goals and win you the cup. I'm an all-star. 50 and 07, 41 and 08. Well, you know, last time Danny Heatley was on the Ottawa Senators, they went to the Stanley Cup Finals, right? Let's see how much Heatley goes for. <laughs> Is he on Florida? Yeah, he's on Florida. Hang on a second here. Let's see if Danny Heatley would be a good acquisition to bring into the Ottawa Senators here. Uh, left wingers. Let's see. Danny Heatley. He's got more trade value than freaking Yarmir Yager. No way. Not trading for him. No way, All-Star. I'm sorry. I know you got 50 and 07, but it's uh, 014 now, so get over it. And last but not least, from Hank Hill. Oh, what's he? Is he made up his mind? Is he moving up to Ottawa? I have to make a trip up to Canada this week to finally get my ass inflated. I hear Superior, Superior Plus wants, wants to talk to me. Moving to Canada might not be a bad idea since the Arizona Coyotes have emptied Strickland propane of all its merchandise with their incredible coupons. <laughs> All right, so maybe we will have some Hank Hill propane up here in Canada. Very nice, very nice. All right, so there are the comments. We will get to the fan art once we start the simulation again. But for the depth, all I'm going to do, boys, this year, I'm not going to make any trades. I'm going to have faith in our team. But what I am going to do is go up to free agency and sign just a, a few depth players. All right, we have the cap space. There's a few guys available. So I'm going to go out and do it. All right, so first up, Tim Thomas. I'm going to sign this guy just in case some goalies get injured. All right, I'm going to sign Timmy T. One year, 1.250. There you go. Uh, defenseman, I'm not going to get Morris. I'll get uh, Ed Jovanovski. There you go. Good depth defenseman. That's all I need right now. Uh, sure, that's perfect. And Hal Gill, no, slow Gill. You know what? Yeah, I will get Hal Gill, actually. There you go. All right, so we're bringing in some depth players here, boys. This is what I mean when I when I said, what should we trade for? Uh, like, I'm not prepared to trade a roster player for a roster player just yet, boys. I can't do it. Chad LaRose, always pick this guy up. Got to do it again. <laughs> Why not? All right. And uh, give me a David Steckel. Ooh, Steckel's got some good face-offs. But Halpern's got better defensive awareness. I'll go with uh, Halpern, all right? So there you go. Two defensemen, a center, and a winger coming in to help this team out if we run into injuries in the playoffs, all right? So there you go. Let's hang on one second. Okay, so let's get this simulation underway. We'll just pass the trade deadline. We'll get these free agents uh, on our team. But you know what? The way the Ottawa Senators have played this year, I can't I can't do it to them. I have to... Oh, ooh, roster is full. I don't even have room for these guys. Oh, shit. Okay, so i got to trade some players away. Uh, maybe I'll just trade a few... Uh, Young players away. Yeah, you know what? I can do that. Forwards, OHL. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So that is dangerous. Chad LaRose. Let me go back and re-sign him so he comes back. Uh, LaRose. There you go. All right. Very nice. I'll get back to you tomorrow. All right. So we're going to get that guy signed. Now, let me just make some uh, basic trades here. 
unload some players who I know are not going to be on the team. All I got to do is unload a few of them. There's some player. There's some teams with some empty roster space. All right, so let me just go trade value. There you go. These guys. We find the guys with one year left. Uh, Kramer. There you go. Very nice. He's 69 overall. I'm not going to use him. 68. McCormick. Not going to use you. All right, so let's just find a team that has an available roster. Hang on a second. Come on. Somebody have two. Right There you go. The San Jose Sharks. All right. So I'm not going to be a dick. Two players for a seventh just because it's roster. Yeah, I know. I could have gotten more boys, but this is me screwing the system a little bit. So I want the computer to get the, the better value of the trade just because uh, it's quite obvious what I'm doing, right? I'm just uh, dumping uh, cap and also clearing up roster space. So yeah, I'll get this guy. This guy's crap. Three years left. Hell yeah. There you go. And 66 England. Yeah, well, unless he's a enforcer, defensive defenseman. Let's see, well, you know what? Well, he's got three red. That might turn out to be something where he's got a little bit more trade value in the future. I'll hold off on him. Gup Till. Let's see this guy power forward. Oh, yeah, I can, yeah, definitely get rid of him. All right, so Gup Till and done. Let's find another team. Do, 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 do. Look how quick I am at this shit, son. Do this all the time. Oh. Well, oh, come on. There's got to be another team in there. Everyone's got... Damn. All these teams filled up. Yeah, they did. Hang on. Oh, oh, oh. Usually, the Anaheim Ducks or the Boston Bruins have space. Nope. No. No. Wow. No one's got space. All right. So, I'll just get rid of this done guy. The three should free it up enough. Uh, man, this is just... Oh, come on. Jesus Christ. This is boring you guys now, isn't it? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, my God. Come on. Team doesn't even have one roster spot available? No way. There you go. All right, the Chicago Blackhawks. I'll just get a seventh for done. There you go. All right, feel guilty all you want. I don't care. All right, so roster moves. AHL lines, just go best lines. Remember, it's Pajot and Pumpo are the only guys down there, so I don't really care about the AHL this year. We'll make the AHL team a, a much better team for next year when I can actually bring in some prospects and go through free agency. All right, so the trade deadline, we are just going to skip it. We're not even going to look at it. Hal Gill, he signed. Halpern signed. Ed Jovanovsky signed. Tim Thomas is signed. Beautiful. All right, so there's our depth. Just some nice veteran depth. And, uh, whoops, yeah, Chad LeBro still can't sign. That's okay. Whatever. All right, so do I need to even stop this at all? Should we just go? Let's go to the last... Go to the last, yeah, you know, last two weeks. There you go. Last game against the Toronto Maple Leafs there, and then eight games remaining. All right, so while this is going, I'm just going to do some fan art. Up first, we have the meat, the Hamburglar. He silenced all the critics this year. Even at 85 overall, he's getting it done, so thank you very much. Need me to win the division, the conference, the president's challenge accepted. Well, come on, son. Keep getting those W's. We might be able to catch Pittsburgh. Uh, hashtag sends army. Hell yeah. That's some nice animation right there. Uh, Patrick. Oh, look at this. Back to the game, boys. Oh, fuck. This is not a good one. This is not a good one. Patrick Weirkoch has been injured with a post-concussion syndrome. His estimated return is June 11th. This guy uh, may be back for the Stanley Cup final. Oh my god. That is huge. I just lost my second best defenseman. Alright, Cody CC. Time for you to get your chance on the first line. I need a two-way defenseman up there. Alright, and Griba. Oh, god damn it. Alright, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Roster moves. That hurts us, man. That's a big freaking injury. Now the trade, that now the lack of trade at the trade deadline really comes back to bite me. But at least I got Ed Jovanovsky. Alright, Jovanovsky and Hal Gill. Uh, we'll go with Ed Jovanovsky. There you go. Jovanovsky can play before, uh, what's his name? Griba. Fucking hell, man. That hurts us. That's a long injury, man, to a key player. I said it all year. We got lucky with the injury bug, and now finally it comes back to bite us in the ass. All right, so Cody CC, Mathot. Uh, yeah, you know what? Cody CC, there you go. And I'll just get, uh, what's his name? Mathot or Braun? Braun. Braun, you can get in there. CC, get up there. Man, this sucks. Braun. Braun. Uh, CC goes here. A lot of this micromanaging right now, boys. I know. Got to do it, though. Jovanovski. I'm trying to go for that President's Trophy, so I don't want to just go best lines right now. Our lines seem to be working, but that could be the President's Trophy. That could be all she wrote right there. Oh, that really hurts us. All right, so let's just continue here. Next up, oh, look at this. Mark Reeds, the assistant coach of the Ottawa Senators. We will play for you, Mark. We will. Rest in peace. Next up, we have Justin Braun and Tommy Wingles, two new Ottawa Senators. Very nice, very nice. Although, Justin Braun, number 61. I don't know. I think that number belongs to Stone, so I don't know if that's going to fly there, Brawny. And last but not least, Eric Carlson. 
the super Swede on fire, baby. That's what we need him to play like from now until the end of the season with Weirkoch gone. All right, so thank you very much for the fan art, boys. But now we got to focus on this. We've lost a few games with Weirkoch out, man. We were playing so much better. Two months. Look at the bottom right. Look what it says for Weirkoch when it shows his name. Oh, that's always bad when you see that. Months. Doesn't even say weeks, fucking months. <laughs> that's not good. All right, so 42, 19, and 9. I think we've lost a few games here since Weirkoch went down. And, I mean, we're still going to be a playoff team. That's not going to be a problem. But the President's Trophy, I think, is now lost. All right. Oh, the Toronto. Oh, yeah, okay, one more week. Hang on a second. Uh, Cole Schneider's been injured with a broken nose. That's Binghamton. Don't have to worry about that. Come on now, boys. Get some wins. There you go. Beating your old team there, Braun and Wingles. Maybe got some goals on Craig Anderson as well. The New York Rangers, let's see what their record looks like. Yeah, we're competing with them for the top of the Eastern Conference, man. Big big game. And we lose. Woo and lose in regulation as well. Yeah, see? Weirkoch went down, man. That was huge. That really was huge. Oh, man, that hurts us. All right, so i got to retake a look at the standings here. We're going to have eight remaining games. It's a uh, possible 16 points on the table. Let's see what we can do, all right? So we just won. Let's see what we did since the trade deadline. Yeah, he got injured somewhere around here, right? Like here. So we lost, lost, won, lost, won, lost, lost. Yeah, won, lost, won. Yeah, we've been able, we haven't been able to win two in a row since Weirkoch went down, all right? So that really does hurt us. So let's see where we are in the standings. Uh, possible 16 points remaining. Right now, we are still first to the Atlantic Division, 97 points. I mean, we're going to be a playoff team with already 97 points. Should get to 100. But, yeah, I don't think we're going to catch the Pittsburgh Penguins anymore. We really need to start winning. Do we have any? We have one game against Pittsburgh. We need to win in reg, and we need to get some help. But I don't think the President's is going to happen this year, boys. I think we're going to stumble into the playoffs. Hurting from uh, Weirkoch going down. All right, there you go. There's a win against the Florida Panthers. It really doesn't matter about... Uh, if we can win in overtime or not, we just need two points. There you go. Regulation loss. No, we're not catching the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's all right, boys. Still a great regular season. Anytime you can get uh, triple digits in points in any NHL team for any season, that's a good year, all right? So 100 points for the Ottawa Senators. That's probably the first time in a long time they've got 100 points. Maybe since 07, 08 or something like that, right? So, yeah, it's a good year. Good year. I won't get down on myself. It's a good year, boys. Going to have to step up, though, in the playoffs to cover up for Weirkoch. All right, there you go. There's another win. Come on now, finish strong, boys. Oh, it's going to say, it'd be nice if we get to 50 wins. So the Pittsburgh Penguins, they got it. They definitely got it. 111 points. Yeah, we're not catching them. 103, though. We can finish second in the NHL if we can win some games here. So come on now. Game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. The President's Trophy is lost. Let's see. Do we beat them? Do we lose? Oh, we lost. We lost in overtime, though, so we got a point. Not going to get the 50-win season. But 104 points so far. 106 points. Very good. Still nine weeks for Weirkoch. Oh, that's so bad. That is a horrible injury. All right, 90, 106. Looks like we have, yep, we've earned second place in the NHL, which is fantastic. All right, last game against the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's see what we can do. Come on, go into the playoffs on a good run. Go into the playoffs. There you go. We're going into the playoffs on a 2-0-1 run in the last three games. Not too shabby. Not too shabby, all right? So let us just get up here. Uh, you know what, actually? I'll follow the standings. Let's see who's going to make it into the playoffs or not. Uh, Anaheim, San Jose, Arrows. Oh, man, people are going to get angry at these rosters now. Arizona, how the hell do they make it? I made their team so shit. <laughs> and Vancouver fans are not going to like it either. Whatever, though. It looks like the Central Division is really strong, though. Holy crap. So it looks like Calgary is not going to make the playoffs because of the wild card in the Central. And in the East, it's like the opposite. The Atlantic is pretty strong. Philadelphia is not going to make it in. Looks like, damn, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to make it in. I don't know what the hell happened. Freaking Bernier and Reimer I made both 84 overall. Somehow they still made it. Whatever. It is what it is. Injuries probably happened. Maybe some trades happened. All right, so let's just go ahead. Oh, ho, 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 ho. and in year one, we got the Battle of Ontario. Oh, my God. This is going to be a good one. This is definitely going to be a good one. All right, so forwards OHL. So, yeah, if you guys want to let me know what I should be scouting for the next video, sure, go ahead. Uh, hang on one second. So here we are at the end of the regular season, beginning of the playoffs, and we have the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's huge, man. All right, so let's take a look at the team standings here, and you guys can... Uh, you guys can call out my roster changes. See, let's see all the, the 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 teams that really made the playoffs in the NHL who didn't make the playoffs in this. All right, so uh, New Jersey, that's good, good, good. Uh, Islanders should have made it. Vancouver should have made it. All right, good, good. So two teams, uh, three teams. 
Uh, well, we're just counting the teams that should have made it in right now. Three teams, four teams, uh, four teams, five teams. Montreal didn't make it in. Oh my god. <laughs> five teams. Uh, yeah. So out of out of what? Sixteen teams that can make it into the playoffs. Five of them I got wrong. All right, not bad. Not bad. Not too shabby. Let's take a look at our goals for per game. Uh, goals for per game, 2.80. 12th in the NHL. Could be a little bit better. Goals against per game. That's the surprise, man. We're a defensive team this year. 2.54. Andrew Hammond's stats must be great. Uh, power play percentage, 18%. Could be a little bit better. Uh, penalty kill percentage, 80.6. So we got that way up there. It was down to like 73 before. Could be a little bit better, but still not too shabby. <laughs> the least penalty kill first. Yeah, okay. Home record. Hang on a second. We'll go down here. Ottawa, home record 25, 9, and 7. So that home ice advantage could be very useful. We're a deadly team on home ice. And 24, 14, and 3 away. And our last 10, 6, 3, and 1. So we're coming into the playoffs 6, 3, and 1, which is very good, very good. Uh, player stats for the season. Let's see who did what for us. The first line with Bobby Ryan, Kyle Turris, and, uh, and Stone. Let's see if these guys, yeah, there it is. Bobby Ryan's a very good year. If you can have 70 points on the first line, it's a very good year. 30 goals, 70 points, perfect season for Bobby Ryan. Kyle Turris, 63, could be a little bit higher, but he's a 20 goal scorer and he enabled Bobby to get 30. I'm fine with it. Mark Stone, 55 points. Remember though, he's only an 84, so with a season with 55 points, hopefully he grows for next year. Hoffman, 54 points. These two guys, man, if they can jump up to 86 or higher, that's really going to bolster our top six. So Bennett Jad, 52. All right, so that's really good numbers for those three youngins right there. And Clark MacArthur, 42. Wingles with 29. Legwan Lazar with 26. All right, all these guys down here. Plus players. Only minus player was David Legwan. Yep, everyone's a plus player, man. We're playing great defensively. Uh, Carlson. That's more like it. Yeah, that's a Carlson type year. 69 points, 15 goals. Very nice. Very nice, Carlson. Uh, but look what Weirkoch. Look what we're missing in Weirkoch, man. He was really thriving with Carlson on that first line. 36 points in 64 games played. He was a plus 12. Definitely, that's a big loss, all right? So I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. And Andrew Hammond definitely solidified himself as our starting goaltender. A 2.39 goals against. A little high, but still good for an 85 and uh, 40, 17, and 1 with a save percentage of just under 92, which is a little low, but... It's not about the stats. It's not about his actual skills. It's about how the team plays when he's in the net. And when he's in the net, we win more than we lose. 40, 17, and 6. All right? So, hell freaking yeah for Andrew Hammond, man. Hell yeah. He's our goaltender. Oh, you know what? Hang on a second. Player stats for the season. I forgot. Got to show you guys so we can see how realistic the individual stats were for the NHL. All right? So, all skaters. Let's go forwards for now. Goals, all right, so Alexander Ovechkin with 53, not bad. James Neal with 43, I guess because Forsberg, he's getting the chance to play on the first line. Thomas Vanek with 42, Pacioretty 41, Stamkos 41, Sagan 40, Nash 39. All right, there you go. There are all the goal scorers. Assist guys, Backstrom, Logan Couture, Sidney Crosby. All right, so Crosby had 90 points. Could be a little bit higher, but what are you going to do? Uh, they got no wingers on that damn team. Stamkos. Backstrom, Malkin, Ovechkin, Crosby, Voracek, Duchesne, Giroux, Parise, Taves, Kane. It's not bad, I suppose, right? I'm sure you guys can find uh, specifics, but it's not horrible. Uh, points. All right, the leading point guy, Ryan Suter on the Minnesota Wild. Eric Carlson came in second, so we might not get that Norris this year. Ryan Suter may get it. Uh, the most goals goes to Keith Yandel, Dustin Bufflin. All right, Carlson had 15. Not too shabby. And goaltenders, let's see who had the most wins. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist with 41. All right, Andrew Hammond with 40. <laughs> Hammond had better numbers than Henrik Lundqvist. Hell yeah. Let's see his save percentage. Oh, Lundqvist had a little bit better of a save percentage. Carey Price had a very good season. Oh, yeah, he did. They only started him 57 times, though. 34, 20, and 1. Should have started him more. You guys would have made the playoffs. Stupid-ass game. All right, so there you go. There are the individual stats. And last but not least, let's just take a look at the GM options, uh, the progress reports. Let's see if anybody jumped up, all right? So Cody Cece, he's really growing, all right? So getting that chance to play on the first line might actually be good for him. Curtis Lazar, he grew a little bit as well. That's good news. Goaltenders, nobody grew. AHL, anybody... Oh my god, yep, Pimple grew by 15, that's very good, and Pajot grew by 7, good. So we're getting some growth from our young guns, alright? So there you go, boys, I want to know what do you guys think about our season, how did it go, 
that injury to Weir Koch and also the Toronto Maple Leafs. How should we arrange our lines? I'm actually open to some suggestions now because that Weir Koch injury throws our whole team out of alignment, right? So there you go. There are the year one playoffs. We got Anaheim versus St. Louis, San Jose versus Arizona, Nashville versus Minnesota, and Colorado versus Chicago. And in the East, Battle of Ontario, Tampa versus Detroit, Pittsburgh versus Boston, and the Rangers versus the Washington Capitals. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one.